Welcome. Let's take a look at applying Newton's method based on our introduction in the previous video. Recall that Newton's method required knowledge of both the function and its derivative, that we need to have some sort of initial guess, an x naught, that might be provided or you may need to make that guess. And then we iterate on finding the x-intercepts of tangent lines to the curve. Now those tangent lines, um, I'm sorry, those x-intercepts generally take on this form of the next intercept is equal to the previous intercept minus f at that intercept divided by f prime at it at that intercept. And so we continue to progress towards the root or the zero of the function by using this iterative process. So let's look at an example. So we're going to use a table to help us organize the information here and help us keep track when we are close enough to the real zero of this function. So in the first column, I'm going to keep track of the iteration. In the second column will be our approximation to the real zero. In the third column will be the function evaluated at that approximation, as well as the fourth column being the derivative at that approximation. With those three pieces of information, we can then approximate the next uh, zero. And with that approximation, we can get the next iteration as we hopefully get closer and closer to the zero of the function. So in this particular example, we were asked to find the, to approximate the real zero of this function that lies close to x equals one. So we will um, choose uh, for our initial guess, for, so n equals zero, one is our initial um, approximation to the zero. Next, we need f at one, so f at 1 is 2 times 1 squared minus 3. So that would be negative 1. We also need f prime at um, negative 1. And it can be helpful instead of simply just writing this title f at x in, it could be helpful just to write it this way f at x n equals 2 times x n squared minus 3 to have that function readily avail available to you. Next we have f prime at x n. So we need the derivative of f. So our derivative of f is 4x. Now our xn is 1, so this would be 4, four times 1, or simply 4. So our next approximation to the 0 would be xn, which was 1, minus f at xn, that was negative 1, over f prime at xn, which was 4. This is basically 1 plus 1 fourth, or more simply, 1.25. So 1.25 is our next x value. So on our next iteration, uh, we'll call that 1. This is x1. It's our first approximation. Uh, that was 1.25 for our first approximation to that zero. 
And so now we continue. Uh, f at xn would be 2 times 1.25 squared minus 3. And that would be equal to 0 0.125. Our f prime at xn would be 4 times 1.25. And so that would be 5. Our next approximation would be 1.25 minus 0 0.125 over 5. And that is approximately uh, 1.225. So notice that these two iterations match in the first decimal place. So then 1.225 becomes our next approximation. It's our x2, so 1.225 becomes the next x value our next iteration. And so f at xn is 0 0.00125. f prime at 1.225 is 4.9. And then if we take 1.225 minus 0 0.00125 over 4.9. Our next approximation is 1.22474. And now notice that um, our approximation here um, matches with the previous approximation to two decimal places. So this is an indication that we are getting closer and closer to the real zero of the function. So we had just found that x3 is 1.22474 and so we continue to evaluate our function. So f at 1.22474 is negative 0 0.00002. f prime at 1.22474 is 4.89896. And then if we combine those using uh, the iterative formula we had determined uh, based on intercepts of the tangent line, we find that for x3, uh, we can produce a next intercept that is 1.22474. So notice at this point, our x values are matching to five decimal places. And we were asked to find the real zero to the nearest 0 0.01, which we certainly have done. So we can say that the approximate zero um, so the real zero is approximately 1.22474. I hope you find this helpful.